So in the first series of Crack School we covered the basics of crack climbing and we looked at all the major widths all the way from fingers to off width and also the protection in cracks and how to tape our hands. Hopefully since then you've had a chance to practice what you've learned and now you're ready to move on to some more advanced techniques. In the first episode of Finger Cracks, we showed you the basic orientation of the fingers in the crack, thumbs up and thumbs down. We also looked at the positioning of our feet and how we twist our toes and the boot rubber into the crack on each move. For this episode, we will show you how to use our fingers in the crack when it becomes a little too wide for traditional thumbs down and thumbs up moves. In addition, we're also going to look at a couple of tricks for getting around hard crux moves with minimum physical effort. Once a finger crack gets bigger than the size of your first knuckle on the index finger, things can get quite tricky. Your fingers no longer naturally lock into constrictions as they're too small and you can often find yourself trying to desperately lay back in this situation. So the solution to this size is a jam that we call a ring lock and what you're doing is you're artificially bringing down the size of the crack by using your thumb as a spacer on the side so that you can then use your fingers as a normal jam. The index finger is the main active jamming finger in this instance and always lies on the side of the thumb which has the nail on it. If you try it the other way around you'll soon see why it doesn't work. The trick is to make sure that you place your thumb and bed it on one side of the crack to start with and then you bring your finger over the top in the same manner as we would when we do a normal finger jam and slide it down until it starts to jam and then we create twisting action in the crack again. Then you'll have a strong finger lock. So unfortunately what you'll find is that when you're doing these ring lock cracks is that the leading hand that you're using for this technique it works absolutely fine but this bottom hand it doesn't work so well so what you'll find is that a lot of the time you'll use what we described in the first series this swimming technique where one hand is leading and the second hand's following so I normally find that that top hand will be doing the ring locking and the bottom hand will either be doing a thin hands hand jam or be lay back in the edge of the crack. So I'll be placing my ring lock in and then I'll move the top hand up again move the bottom hand up and the top hand goes up into the ring lock again. As every crack is almost entirely unique to the person climbing it due to having different finger sizes and hand sizes, you need to develop a bag of tricks to deal with some of these crux moves that you encounter on routes. We're now going to demonstrate for you one useful trick for the hands and one for the feet. What I've often found is that climbing on finger cracks and peg scarred finger cracks all over the world is that sometimes that you'll be placing your fingers into a peg scar and they just don't quite seem to fit right. It's almost as if you want your, your fingers to be just a millimetre smaller or a millimetre larger and when you place your fingers in the peg scar they just don't quite seat right and there's a really good little trick that you can use for this. So rather than placing our first two fingers in the peg scar we're going to place our middle two fingers which leaves this spare finger on the outside. So when we do that is we actually split our fingers in the crack and place the middle two in the top section and then place that bottom finger lower down and then still create that twisting torquing effect in the crack and that creates really nice solid jam with all three fingers. So this last technique I actually learned from reading a Peter Croft article and he's a, a world-class crack climber with a, a great wealth of experience. Uh, so when you're faced with a hard move in a crack, actually the easiest solution is to reach around it, but this actually only becomes possible uh, when you have the correct body positioning. As you can see here, I'm actually climbing with thumbs down uh, and when I get to this long move here, I'm limited by the reach that I can use. So when I lock down, I can't actually make a long move to the next jam. 
Uh, so here, instead of going thumbs down, actually go thumbs up. And by placing a high foot smear, you're then able to reach a lot further. It's best to use opposite hands and feet as this is the most efficient way to climb. So when you're faced with a hard move, make eye contact with an ideal high jam above that may be reachable after the crux. With experimentation, you'll actually find that this works with many different sizes of cracks and it's all about finding the appropriate hand orientation for allowing you to lock a jam lower than your shoulder height. What's important is that you don't try and twist and jam your foot into the crack on these extra long moves as this will limit your reach and will tend to make you use footholds that are too low. Thank <laughs> you.